very much for your help. Thank you. Thank you. I will talk to you. Which one? You're welcome. Which one is your favorite? Oh, you can hear that. things to say. Um, we have some evaluation forms. I want you to um, give us um, some feedback on this school. So yeah, <laughs> I'll get it back tomorrow. So yeah, anyway, so I'll distribute it after this um, hour. We're going to have four speakers in this hour. We're just going to just describe some of the resources around available for you to use. So I'm going to talk first, and Dr. Delzana and Evgeny and, and Yuri uh, will show you what's around. OK. Um, and also, I'm going to put the run file in a, a zipped file, the one that I used yesterday in one of the shared folder. I'll, I'll tell you later. OK, so first, I'd like to uh, show you something that we have at IAEA. We have a lot of stuff at IAEA. Um, we organize meetings, workshops like this one, and also we host databases and online codes, many things. So this is our homepage. You can go to www minus oops minus mdis.aaa. Yeah. <laughs> Which one should I go? <laughs> Yeah, anyway, so this is our main page. And there are a lot of different things because we do a lot of different things. So our unit was founded in 1976, more than 40 years ago. So main goal of our unit is to provide um, data, uh, atomic data, molecular data, plasma surface interaction data, any kind of data that is really important for fusion mainly, and also um, other plasma applications. So uh, we do a lot of um, meetings, as I said. So on the right side, um, there are meeting announcements. So the second one here is the, the meeting that we are having. Nope, it's 2014. <laughs> so let me show you. The <laughs> uh, this is the one, OK? So this is the, the meeting page for this particular school. So you go there, there are several things, but also you will find schedules. So I'm going to put the slides and presentations in this web page. And also I'm going to put the abstracts here also. It's not there yet, but anyway, that's what we're going to do. Our web pages has a lot of stuff. And we have like databases, you can see on top. We have also online computing. Um, the other thing that you might want to consider is actually a lot of activities. If you go to the meeting page, we have meetings every year, like eight to nine meetings. And for each meeting, um, there is a um, um, like presentation. So let's say if you go to, oops, not this one. No. Let's go to uh, this one. Maybe, yeah. Then, you know, they, there are meeting agenda, and then it also contains the presentation. And we cover a lot of uh, really large areas of, of fields. So um, you can find a lot of information there. And the other thing that you may check out is knowledge base. This is wiki style. Supposedly, it has a lot more information than it, it does now, but <laughs> Anyway, uh, we hope that we can add more stuff. But anyway, this was one of the um, sort of a, um, a, a wiki pages that people who are interested in atomic data, molecular data, plasma surface interaction data can come and, and read stuff. Anyway, so um, let, me, let me go back to 
um, my presentation now. Okay, so we have databases. One of the databases is numerical database of Aladdin. Um, our unit doesn't collect any data. Well, we want to collect recommended data. So Aladdin started as a database of recommended data. But unfortunately, over the years, that sort of idea faded away. So now it's just a collection of data now. But still, a lot of data were evaluated and recommended, especially the ones from 1980s and so on. So we, don't, we have some data, like 20,000 atomic and molecular data. So this is not a place to get data for your CI modeling. If you want to do collision radio modeling, you, you'd better go to, um, I mean, use FAC or RATIP, you know, the, the codes to generate the, um, the data for CR modeling. But this is the data, usually people use it for like kinetic codes or radiation hydrodynamic code, and they, they need a few cross sections, and that's where they go to find a good data. Anyway, it has many different data different types of data. We have heavy particle collisions, like charge exchange and so on, and also electron collisions and photon collisions. We also have plasma surface interaction data, uh, reflection, sputtering, and penetration, and so on. Um, so this is an interface. So Yuri is going to uh, use this later in, in, in this talk, in this hour. Um, so you can see that you know, for the heavy particle, there are process categories and so on. We have, as I said, we have um, plasma surface interaction data. So you see the processes, and you find projectile and surface and, and the com chemical compounds of, of surface. We have bibliographical database, which means it's just uh, literature information. Um, we get spectroscopic data from NIST. NIST also has the bibliographical database for I mean, Yuri is going to talk about it, but the data we have is the ones only for fusion relevant elements. We used to get collisional data, uh, the bibliographical data from Oak Ridge Lab, but Oak Ridge Lab data center closed about six years ago. So we are sort of trying to get data from this, cent this data center and that data center, but after 2010, we, have a, we, we are struggling to get bibliographical data. But before 2010, we have pretty much comprehensive bibliographical data sets for spectroscopic and collisional and also plasma surface interaction um, data. So the way it works is that you put the reactant here or there or surface, and then you can click you know, categories like heavy particle or surface interaction and so on then it'll come up with the references, references that, that you have, um, references that have uh, the data sets. So I'll, I'll just show you um, just quickly, for example, um, of course, people might think that why, why don't you go to just Google Scala to find, you know, like paper that has cross sections. But it doesn't work very well. If you go and say, okay, I want to get tungsten dielectronic recombination cross section, you go type tungsten dielectronic cross-section, you get like millions of, <laughs> millions of data or, or results. So it's really not um, good. But if you say, you know, tungsten here and electron collision and search, then it's going to show you 85 um, like references. If you click on the reactant data, it shows the ionization, you know, in, in, in which um, elements and charge states and so on. So if you're looking for a specific um, cross-section that was published, this um, database is really, really useful. Okay, so that was uh, MBDAS, our bibliographical database. Um, as I said, you know, the knowledge base was supposed to be the, the central place for atomic physicists plasma physicists, molecular physicists, they can all come to this wiki page and learn from each other. It was supposed to be that way, but, well, not so yet, but we're working on it. So, so there we 
we aim to uh, give information about what kind of data is needed for different types of plasma applications, where you can find data, you know, data sources, you know, online databases, data centers. You know, there are many data centers, not many, but there are data centers, national data centers around the world. They maintain their databases. And also there are code centers, you know, people who make codes. And that kind of information was supposed to be in, in these wiki pages. Uh, we have a like database um, search engine called Genie. So what it does is it goes out to several databases and find um, information like radiative uh, transition probabilities or electron cross sections. So for example, if I want to get transition probabilities of carbon four. We have lengths of one to, let's make it like 10 to 100. And then if I click this, then it's going to go to all this nine, is it nine? Yeah, nine um, databases. It'll collect all the information from them. It's thinking, <laughs> it's connecting, it's waiting. OK, so now you see that there are uh, results there's no results from there. OK. OK, there is Spex W3, which is in Russia. They have all these things, uh, all these lines listed. And also the one from ChemDB, which is in um, China, they also have some results. So, um, so this is one way that you can get data. OK, that was Genie. Um, and also, we maintain online codes and also data that were generated by codes. So there are several places, like um, there's uh, electron impact excitation cross-sections for any ion and configuration. Or there is a heavy particle collision uh, code um, for excitation ionization charge exchange for bare nucleus on hydrogenic target. And also, this is effective ionization re uh, recombination rate code um, is generated by Los Alamos code. And also, we host uh, the um, data that was generated by Los Alamos people using their code on silicon, chlorium, and argon. And also, uh, we have some flight check collision radio code results. So you can use flight check online at NIST. But if you want to just get charge state distribution or radiative loss rate, you can just go to this um, page. And also, there is electron impact excitation and ionization cross section calculated by the um, Atom AKM code in Russia, Lebedev, I think. And also, we have, we have generated effect results. It's about 30 gigabytes from helium to silicon like. Uh, silicon atoms. So, so let's say um, if you go to the flight check web page uh, at this at at IAEA, uh, you can click on one of these sort of um, periodic table, and then it show. For example, if you click on tungsten, you get every charge state, radiative loss rate, and also you can get charge state distribution and also rate coefficients. You can just download it and and use it for your. Um, work. Uh, the fact code, um, we generated about it from helium to silicon ions. And also, we are working on a thing called uh, fly fact project. So um, it uses C fact data you know, that FDE um, made. So, um, so it's, it's based on SQL. Uh, format and it, the the Fortran 90 code 95 it will calculate the charge state distribution and level population of the um, C effect data. It's almost there. <laughs> it's been there for a while, but and it just I just need to debug it and then put it on the on the web page. So it's something to be coming in the future. Um, there are uh, other data. For example, there's a Frank Connor factors for hydrogen molecules. These, uh, these numbers are very important for tokamak plasmas and so on. Um, so yeah, and also we distribute codes. So so you can download Graph2K from our our webpage or from NIST. 
uh, you only need to just click on um, on the uh, agree. I mean, people people have a hard time somehow downloading. So I'll just show you how to do it. So you go to Grasp 2K, and then you know you go to license agreement. You accept. Then you can download any of those. Um, let me just show you what Los Alamos codes uh, data. And so this was generated by people in Los Alamos. If you go to Argon, then you can download Argon um, atomic data. But if you look at the, the configurations, um, these are the configurations that are included in this atomic data. So um, yeah, you can use it. And for fact data, oh yeah, for fact actually, um, the source codes are available from GitHub, uh, but you can also look at this input guidelines. Uh, this is what Ming Mingu um, wrote for us. So this gives you some tips how to write your input file for fact codes, fact data, because yeah, <laughs> there are little things that you want to know to make the code work better. Um, yeah, and then also there are atomic sort of, um, let me see, I can show you some of the input. Is there any good, maybe? Yeah, so this is the, um, um, the fact input file in Python interface, and you can use this also to generate your fact data. So, you know, you, you set up atoms, and then you, you set up your configuration sets. Um, you have to optimize it, structure to get levels, uh, level energies, and then, well, there are many other steps, yeah? Uh, this was written by Ming Mingu, so it's something to check out. And you can also get the uh, radiation transition probability, and you get uh, TR is area, yeah, the, the radiation trans uh, transition radiation area. Yeah. Okay, um, let me see. I'm trying to find the collision excitation. Are we still at the transition? Probability, I think we are. Okay. Um, maybe not. <laughs> okay, so here's CI. Ah, yeah, 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 right. Oh, yeah, RR is the rated recombination. Oh, yeah, here it says it's doing CI and RR. Oh, I guess I missed it somewhere. Anyway, check it out. <laughs> so there are some input file, and also there are uh, input file for UTA if you want to do the configuration average model um, using fact. This there is a um, Python in, um, input file also for Zman split level for those who are working on tokamaks. They want to look at the Zman splitting. So you can use this uh, input file, or some some people want to do polarization spectroscopy, and here's an input file for polarization. And one can actually do the CR model calculations using fact code also, so you can use those. And um, as I said, we, we, we um, generate all the data already for you, so you can just download it and, and use it for yours. Okay, so we do that. Um, let me see. I think that's it. <laughs> oh, that was my last slide. <laughs> okay, so um, again, you know, IA has a lot of interesting activities going on, and so we had a similar workshop two years ago. So this is our school, but like two years ago in 2015, we also had a um, school and workshop, and then um, we had a, um, we have the presentation and lecture notes from that time. Um, so you can check it out there also. Like Professor Kunze was there also last time. Yeah. So we're gonna have similar lecture notes, um, you know, presentation available through this webpage, so check it out. 
Okay, now we're going to move on to uh, Dr. Del Zena, and Yuri is going to introduce. To use okay. Hello. <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, thank you very much for to the organizers for giving me this opportunity. I mean, when whenever there is a workshop in Italy, I try to I try to chip in because I'm Italian, and I, you know, of course, I love to come back to Italy. And having lived for 20 years in England, I'm missing good coffee and and uh, good food that I'm sure you have enjoyed during these days. So yes, he, this is me, in case you've been wondering you know, who was this strange person you know, going around without, without the thing. Um, I thought you might be interested, some of you, especially in the, uh, doing some astrophysical work uh, in uh, <coughs> some resources that some of you might find it useful. Uh, that's my email address. This presentation I'll send by email to the organizers so they can be put together with the other ones, so you don't have to take notes. Um, I have different hats, but the main hat that I have today is about Chianti database, which was mainly developed to, um, to study uh, spectra. We started by a group of people about 20 years ago. To, we were interested in studying solar spectra in this, from the extreme ultraviolet. You see an example here or in the x-rays where plasma are optically thin. Uh, you have an image of the solar corona, which is very typical on the left. But optically thin, uh, collisionally ionized uh, plasmas are also, you know, very common in all nebulae, supernova remnants, uh, intracluster uh, intra of galaxies, and so it, the, these plasmas are very, very easy um, to study. So as I said, this is a group of people that developed uh, the Chianti database. I'm one of the members. Um, that's the main web address, Chianti database. Maybe if I have a minute, I will show you. Uh, later, we provide atomic data, but also programs. In terms of atomic data, they are actually included. Uh, what we put in, we try to find the best uh, atomic data for ions, uh, but our atomic data are also included in many other databases. The main one that I'm sure that Yuri will talk about later is VAMDC. This is a this is a network of about 30 databases worldwide that we put together. Uh, with some European funding. So that's in terms of atomic and molecular databases, I think BAMDC is the, is the most comprehensive uh, set of, uh, a most comprehensive resource that you can, you can think of. Uh, we do assess the data. We publish a, a, a refereed paper about it, and we have details about um, uh, what, we, what we think are the best, why we, we think that the various atomic data are the best. So the nice thing about astrophysical plasma is that you can't forget about all those complications that the previous speakers talked to you about, about, about radiative transfer and all that. And optically thin plasma is extremely easy. The intensity is proportional to the population of the upper level. All you need is the transition probabilities, the A values. And what we do is in terms of level populations, we solve the level populations within an ion, taking into account all the populating and the populating uh, processes. And then separately, we, we, uh, we take into account the charge state distribution. At the moment, what we do is something very simple. We calculate the ionization equilibrium using low densities values. These are the source of data that we have. We have uh, various files, or in ASCII. Uh, one is the energies. We have observed and, and theoretical energies for the ions. We have the radiative data. And also, we have Maxwellian average, the ion-electron collision strengths. And we have the same from protons. We also have all the rates to calculate the charge state distribution. So we have direct electron impact ionization, uh, the electron recombination, radiative recombination. We have the cross sections and the rates. And we provide the program so people can actually use these rates and, and, and do and whatever they want to do. Um, we improve the NIST wavelengths. I mean, we start normally from NIST, but in some, for some important ions, we actually try to improve uh, the NIST uh, wavelengths. And uh, we change the format, so we actually publish now the, in the latest release, which was published recently, one year ago, we actually published the actual rates uh, as published, not some fits as we were used to do before. 
We also have a uh, possibility to include photo excitation in the level population and also non-Maxwellian electron distributions. But as I said, the main limitation is the, the fact that we, we assume that the plasma is ionization equilibrium at the moment. Um, so most people, what they do, they use these programs uh, that uh, we wrote in, in IDL. Uh, for example, this is one case. You define, um, um, uh, you, take, you take an ion, in this case oxygen, oxygen 5, 4 plus, uh, you define a density range, a specific temper electron temperatures for which you want to uh, calculate the emissivities. You calculate the emissivities of all the spectral lines within the ion, and then you can take the ratio of them. And from the simple ratio within lines of the same ion, you see that some of these transitions depend from the density in a different way. From these ratios, then you, you can measure directly uh, the electron density. And the same thing you can do with temperature. And the other thing which uh, Chianti has been very, very popular with a lot of people is that we also provide a simple way to calculate a spectrum in any wavelength, uh, including the continuum. And I also developed um, some Python user interfaces, which are basically the same kind of thing. It will be soon, very soon available. We have a Google group, so if you're interested, you can sign up to this Google group. This is a similar in the sense that you can see the emissivity as the spectral lines on, again, from oxygen 5 as a function of density and, uh, or as a function of temperature. Now, very quickly, I'm going to put another hat because I'm also a member of uh, a team of atomic physicists. Um, they are here. It's called the APAP uh, UK Network. And we've been providing uh, basic uh, rates and cross-sections for f the fusion community through, for example, ADAS. Some of you have probably heard about the ADAS. Uh, um, atomic um, database, and, uh, and also we provide this data to, to the Chianti Atomic Database and for most actually databases around the world. Um, the recent, in the last few years, we worked on all these sequence and my main contribution has been to calculate cross-sections for electron excitation, so these very difficult coronal iron ions in a sequence of, uh, of papers. And I'll just show you an example of what it means. Basically, these are very large scales, including principal quantum numbers up to four and five. And they were necessary because I was particularly interested in the soft X-rays. This, this is a spectrum in the soft X-rays. And in green, you see the atomic data that we had in Chianti before until a few years ago, 2012. And we were actually missing most of these lines because these are transitions formed by iron ions. Uh, from the principal quantum number n equals to 4. Uh, with the new uh, distorted wave data, they will work out, we calculated with uh, flexible atomic code, but even uh, we replaced them with uh, our matrix scattering data, then we have a much better uh, and complete set of, uh, of atomic data uh, about this. And this large-scale calculation also improved uh, a lot um, <coughs> measurements of densities. For example, this is a plot of the densities obtained from ratios of different lines in the stream ultraviolet from solar, some solar spectra. In version 7, we measured the density of about 10 to the, 10 to the 9 or something like that. But uh, we just changing the atomic uh, data, and this was actually a surprise. We didn't expect this. We actually find, using the same observation, we find much lower densities, bringing into agreement, uh, uh, basically, the, the observations. This is just, just an example. So. Uh, that's it. If you, if you, if I have another couple of minutes, yes. Yeah, I can uh, show you quickly. Quickly, um, this is just the web page of uh, the, our Chianti database, and you can find the data, the programs. You can find the the references and, and the details, the papers. Uh, but for me, this is what I developed. You have, uh, you have also, of course, the user guides. For me, a very useful thing is to have the direct access to the data files. So <clears throat> I'm going to be biased. I'm going to choose an ion that I've been working on, uh, iron 10, for example, iron 9 plus. So you see, if you, you have the links uh, to the actual files, these ASCII files that I told you about, so you can actually directly uh, get the energies and the relative data, everything you, you want. And you also have the references to the actual papers and some comments about uh, what is in the database. Um, so you have the first file is the energy, the second one is the radiative data. We have the electron collisional data and the proton collisional data. 
We also have tables of line emissivities and things like that. Um, this is the VAMDC portal, but I think that Yuri will probably mention it. So this is, a, this is a portal where you can access atomic and molecular data from 30 uh, databases around the world. Um, some of the links and uh, some of the searches uh, don't work uh, properly, but uh, most of them should work. Um, this is the, the web page of this UK APAP network where we've been calculating things. Connor Balance was here during, uh, earlier on during the week, so he probably talked to you about about these sort of calculations that we've been uh, running with these are matrix codes in terms of electron ion scattering. If you go, uh, there are various links to where you can find the data, you can find the codes. And uh, for example, in terms of atomic data, these are matrix codes are all in these directories organized by, organized by as electronic sequences. And finally, this is the open data, which I mentioned, where also these, the data that we calculate, they go to. And the open EDAS uh, is quite nice because it has all sorts of, uh, all sorts of um, atomic data. You can see all these classes of, uh, of data where you can find uh, relative data, uh, rates for uh, excitation. You also have um, um, effective, <coughs> effective rates <coughs> calculated for <coughs> um, ionization and, and, and recombination taking into account density effects, all sorts of things. So, this is another useful resource. Thank you. <clears throat> Any quick questions? Okay, good. But anyway, as I said, I'll, I'll send the PDF file so you can all the links to these resources. Continue from the point uh, left at my uh, lecture. I want to show you in a few more details the interface for plasma formula interactive. Okay, so that's the well. You don't see it, but it will be published, or you can uh, find it easily in the Google. Just uh, write there plasma formula interactive, and you will find that link. Okay, Afon's okay. in the home page of this uh, utility there is a user guide uh, you can download which means just you take uh, get a zip file you unpack and then run uh, index or whatever HTML it's a JavaScript utility there is a reference paper with a link and uh, well license in the uh, GNU public license uh, so let's uh, do some interesting more or less realistic uh, calculations uh, let's take 10 to the 14. I, I am going to, 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 to enter plasma conditions, say, for tokamak diverter, okay? So I don't know, 4 EV, uh, okay, so it will be deuterium, uh, same temperature, same density, radiator, again, talking about deuterium. Uh, I don't put here a uh, percentage of the radiator because all plasma is homogeneous in this case. Uh, okay, and say uh, some high uh, bimer line. Okay, and let's put also typical five Tesla magnetic field. Let's see what can we get with uh, very fast uh, calculations or estimates. 
So the most important, at least for me as a line shape uh, guy, is uh, anything that goes into the energy. Uh, you can get transition energy, uh, natural line width, which is very small, of course, for, for hydrogen or deuterium. Uh, fine structure estimate. By the way, you have here a kind of documentation which loads Wikipedia directly. For time being, I will uh, unselect this option because I don't want it to, to interfere with this short talk. Uh, well, Doppler. And uh, let's switch to centimeters minus one. You can use also atomic units and different well, energies, which is not so uh, convenient for, for, for line broadening, but for other stuff in the energy folder, it is uh, OK. Uh, so, uh, OK, so Doppler, estimate of the Zeeman splitting, Stark. And you can get separately contributions if you are ever interested due to the electrons, due to ions, and uh, radiators, in which case, in our case, radiators are neutral, so there is no uh, contribution, of course. Uh, uh, you can compare different things if you, are, if you want to. For example, let's compare uh, Doppler, I do add to favorites, uh, Zeeman, and total Stark. Good. Now you can go to compare and see these uh, entities that you selected in a table, and you can uh, also sort according to the value and see that the most important for that line, for that conditions, would be Stark, which is uh, two times larger than the Zeeman, but they are comparable and also comparable to the Doppler. Uh, next thing you likely to, to explore is to, to see how these values would change if you vary one of the parameters. Let's vary density. And uh, I'm going to change it two times in each direction. Let's do plot. And you see them. So as density goes up, the, of course, the Zeeman and the Doppler uh, effects remain the same, but Stark goes up. Uh, another. Uh, we, 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 we were talking about uh, continuum lowering. So another uh, entity of interest is minimal energy distance, which is the distance to the next neighboring level. Well, we can also add it and go back here or plot. And you see it's, of course, orders of magnitude larger, which means this line that we were selected, a uh, bimer 8 to 2, will be very far from the continuum lowering. But Let's see uh, which line we actually can see for, for this condition, the last one. Let's try to, to increase it a bit, 11. And like, see, OK, it's still uh, far from the continuum lowering, 12, 13. Still OK. So probably 15 will be the last one. Yes, OK. So already for density of 1.5, 10 to the 14 particles per cubic centimeter, the uh, stark broadening will become comparable to the distance to the next level, which means that's the last uh, line you will see. OK? And you're welcome to explore all other uh, options here, all other entities. There is a lot of them. Uh, there are dimensionless, like coupling parameters, beta, for, again, that's for, for Takamak people. Uh, also from atomic uh, uh, date, from atomic physics stuff like oscillator strengths, you can get that value for the, for the selected transitions. I forgot to mention everything is calculated assuming hydrogenic approximation, which you, you must check. One uh, possibility to check, by the way, is to go to, uh, again, to the energy and see the fine structure. If fine structure is much smaller than the stark broadening, then you know you are in the safe region when you can safely use this uh, utility. If fine structure becomes lar is larger than the stark, then do not use it. Okay. Well, uh, a lot of entities like the in lens, it's the bio lens and uh, gyro radius. Again, you can uh, add this for comparisons. Go back here to compare, and now you see these uh, entities of the dimension of length. And you can switch back to energy. 
you see them back, and uh, back length. And here also you can plot as a function of density, but you can also see how it behaves if you vary magnetic field. OK, it's, uh, you can say that about uh, two Tesla, there would be some interesting effect when the by and the by lens and gyro radius becomes comparable. Well, etc. You are welcome to explore this utility. Okay. Uh, there are quite a few um, resources on the web related to um, to atomic physics and, and plasma spectroscopy. Certainly, within the next ten to fifteen minutes, I will not be able to cover uh, all them at all. So, um, let me let me let me start with simple statement that you already heard a few times. If you want to build a collision relative model, normally it requires a lot of atomic data. Now, you cannot find all the data that is required for a good model in atomic databases. Uh, there's simply, um, it's, it's really, let's say, because if, if you have Chianti, Chianti is already a collision relative model with the data with it, and the same is valid for Flychuk. But if you want to build something uh, uh, of, of yours, almost impossible. You have to run cause yourself. However, what you can find online is the uh, data to compare results of some of your calculations again. So let's start with a simple thing. For instance, we want to uh, calculate ionization cross-section from uh, single ionized neon. And for this, I'll be using the uh, Los Alamos interface that you saw we were running for atomic structure. Okay, so I'm going to the same page. Gov. Um, okay, now not only atomic structure can be calculated here, but also excitation and ionization. So here we proceed with cross section calculation. Um, okay, so let's speak ionization. Let's speak configuration mode, which means we're not talking about fine structure levels, but just about configuration to make everything simple. OK. Now we have to choose the ion. And let's take neon 1 plus, singly ionized, and we go to configuration selection. By default, the interface offers us two configurations, which obviously are the ground configuration for both ions. Of course, neutral neon is 2p6, so single ionized is 2p5, double ionized is 2p4, and this is exactly what we need. In principle, it's possible to add more configurations here, but let's just restrict ourselves to what we have here. All right, next step. Uh, the program has calculated the structure parameters, and the calculated ionization energy for this configuration to a square to p5 is approximately 42 uh, electron volts. Well, the good point here is to compare it with the recommended data. And if we go to the NIST database, atomic spectral database, uh, with access to ionization energies, you'll find that the actually measured value is approximately 41 eV. So the difference only one out of 42, which is certainly good. And therefore, let's continue with calculation. Now. On the next page, you can choose different methods uh, and different parameters for your actual calculation. So let's say uh, we will have energy units for cross-section calculation and threshold unit units, which is uh, reasonably uh, good. We'll put maximum number of 20 energy points to calculate cross-section. Uh, let's say... Um, that's probably it. Now, there are three methods here to choose from. One is the distorted wave uh, method, which should work pretty well for, for ions. 
Then there are two somewhat simplified methods, scale hydrogenic and binary encounter method. By the way, on the entry page, there are manuals on uh, all uh, components of, the, of, the, of this package, so you can uh, read them and check what uh, each of these mean. But basically, let's pick all three of these and run the code. Okay, so it's running, and here's the result. Scaled, hydrogenic, binary encounter, and distorted wave ionization. Now, okay, we have three methods, three cross-sections. Um, how are we doing? Now, to answer this question, we can use one of the collisional databases that are available. And probably this is the best because it's the most comprehensive. This is the da database developed at the National Institute for Fusion Sciences in in uh, Japan. The address is dbshino, dbshino.nivs.ac.jp. Uh, it's also not one database, but several databases, including, for instance, all parts from the IEA Aladdin, differential cross-sections from molecules, ion abundance tables for different uh, uh, types of calculation. But at this point, let's just try to find where ionization cross-sections are. So we enter the database. And it offers us quite a number of actual numerical databases. Certainly, we're picking up the ionization. And here we, we will be uh, looking for a singly ionized neon. So the element will be neon. Uh, initial ionization state will be 1. Let's just go ahead with, with this choice. And we're looking for cross-sections. OK, here what it finds. 13 records for single ionization. One electron comes, two electrons go out. Two records for double ionizations. One electron comes, three electrons go out. So of course, we pick single ionization because this is what we calculated. These two options give uh, bibliographic information, but we actually want numerical data. So we select this option, ask to display, and this is the result of uh, mm, what it found in, in, in the database, all these papers. We want graphical display to look at, at the data. Now, uh, the automatic modes for to scale x and y axis may not be very convenient a priori, so let's pick linear for y, logarithmic for x, and let's see what we got here. Okay, it's a um, little bit small, but nonetheless, you can see that there's a lot of data. Now, the legend here has uh, letters E or T at the end, and of course it means experiment or theory. So, and of course you can see that there are uh, uh, uncertainties given here for experimental data, these green open circles, this is some theory going up, but let's say that we accept that at the peak of cross-section, which is approximately at 200 electron volts, the cross-section here is slightly over 3, 10 to the minus 17. Here's the scale. Okay, how are we doing for uh, our Los Alamos calculation? Uh, the scaled hydrogenic ionization has peak at uh, one point nine electron volts, and you remember actually we have it at two hundred. Oh, excuse me, this is x value. Let's let's quickly recalculate. Uh, so we will we will ask for the output in electron volts. Yeah. That, that would be too little. So it would be about 80, 100. OK. Now the, the uh, units are correct. So energy in EV. The peak is reached at approximately 93 electron volts. Actual peak experimental is at 200. So it's way off. The value, the actual value of cross-section, 5.6, 10 to the minus 17, slightly above than 3.2 or whatever it might be. So. Not, not too good. Now, binary encounter reaches the peak value of 8.2 10 to the minus 17, which is way above the measured value, at slightly higher energy, which is 110 EV approximately. 
but the distorted wave ionization results reaches the peak at uh, 170, 200, between 170 and 200 EV with a value of slightly below 410 to the minus 17. And remember, this was the simplest cal calculation. We just took two configurations in random. So it seems that uh, the distorted wave ionization uh, result is probably the best. Now, let's find out what we have at IAEA. And for this, we go to the uh, IAEA MDIS data, uh, Aladdin database, which can be reached again through all these steps that Hume showed you. We are talking about electron collisions. We're talking about ionization. We're picking up reactant one, which is uh, neon. We start with neon plus one. And then we try to find all available data for this ion. So there are four sets of data. Um, let's pick second and third. We go to numerical data. Here's the tables of data, and here are the plots. OK. Now, one set of results goes practically uh, to where we, uh, to, to what we calculated was Los Alamos here. The other one goes way below. Now, the difference is that this ionization is of the 2p electron. But this red one actually is from the 2s electron. And I didn't point it out, but uh, that, that explains the difference in cross-section. Now, why we agree so well with this black curve? Well, the answer is simple. That, that cross-section was also calculated with Los Alamos code, which, is, which means that Los Alamos code works generally uh, pretty well. Now. Um, let me um, then say just a few words uh, about kind of data that we have at NIST in addition to the atomic spectra database. There is a big program on production of physical reference data. Uh, and you can find not only atomic spectroscopy data, but molecular spectroscopy, physical constant. The periodic table here is practically the same as this one, that please don't forget to pick it up, except that online we already have new names for uh, the four elements here from 113 to 118. Now, for atomic spectroscopy data, in addition to atomic spectra database, we also have a few others. But I would like to emphasize as strongly as possible the importance of bibliographic databases. Uh, the data that come to the atomic spectra database. First are evaluated by scientists. And unfortunately, we don't have as many people working on this as we would like. Therefore, although data can be produced, calculated, it takes a long, long time actually to reach uh, atomic spectra database. And this is what uh, Julie was uh, uh, talking about today. They take data from NIST. But this data may be really old, simply because we don't have enough resources to update it. However, the data that propagates to the bibliographical database, so better to say bibli bibli bibliographic references to the data, is updated almost daily. So for instance, if we go to the atomic energy levels and spectra bibliographic databases, uh, and we display the search form. As you see, it was last updated two days ago. So we actually have semi-automatic system that downloads papers, analyzes, and then uh, scientists spend not, not too much time uh, basically confirming what this automatic system found and um, what, what it has. So if we are talking about, for instance, something like singly ionized neon, you see it finds 231 references. And some of them are from 2015, 14. And this is kind of data that hopefully does reach atomic spectra database, but not immediately. And uh, finally, 
uh, Julio also mentioned, that you mentioned, the Virtual Atomic and Molecular Data Center. Uh, this is kind of uh, organization that, oh, now it's a consortium that uh, tries to develop methods to retrieve data simultaneously from uh, various databases. Uh, quite powerful and a lot will be developed in the future. Okay, let me stop at this point and we will continue. Uh, we'll start at 2.25 uh, at, the, at the computer room.